guys, up hello. My name is Emma, and today is day one of Book Expo. So, the first day of Book Expo, Wednesday, nothing really happens. You mostly just pick up your registration badge and then you go home. So, today we're gonna get tattoos. My first tattoo, and I'm kind of scared. I'm so excited for you. You're gonna get addicted. You're never gonna stop. Hopefully. A whole um, sleeve. <laughs> Imagine. Imagine Brenda. <laughs> I'm here right now with Brandon the Book Addict and Sarah from Sarah Without Me Each. And we're staying with Michael Book Lion, she might be Monica, and Kaylee Hyde. And it's just like one big New York apartment of booktubers and it's wonderful. So today we're going to get tattoos and then later we're going to Mean Girls on Broadway and I'm so excited oh, for today. I mentioned that. <laughs> yeah, and guess what guys, it's Wednesday today and Wednesdays we wear pink. It's Wednesday, my dudes. It is Wednesday, my dudes. What's that? <laughs> oh my god, there's people. <laughs> what did he? Oh my god. I know, I know that place. Sorry, ma'am. <laughs> Okay, Emma, how are you feeling right now? Um, it's painful, but not like the worst pain I've ever experienced in my life. Okay, but you look super relaxed right yeah, now. Yeah, I'm really relaxed. So this is Sarah's tattoo. It's so freaking cute. How much do you love it? I love it. I'm obsessed. It's so freaking gorgeous. Yeah, it's, I love the we said it literally detail. doesn't even look like a tattoo. Like yeah, it looks no, like it's just like it's like a drawing. Yeah, like, yeah it's so good. So, so. And then let me see Kat. Her Hamilton tattoo. Like tattoo. Oh, it looks so good. It's so delicate. No, it's so wonderful. I love it so much. Love the font just looks so perfect. Yeah. I adore it. It's Hamilton's handwriting. <laughs> so this is my tattoo. It, <laughs> it is a monogram of every letter and the first yeah. uh, 10 numbers of the English alphabet. Bran, how do you like your tattoo? I love it so much. It looks so good. My first one. Well, that's a good picture of the detail. The detail is just like unbelievable. It's, it's Bran's first tattoo. It was a little comfortable at first, but then intensified as it went like closer to the sensitive uh -huh. part of the skin, like the elbow, but after a while, it you get used to it. And then it's totally worth it because yes. Yes. So we just left Blackfish Tattoo and we all got our tattoos. <laughs> oh my god, Everyone you right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm vlogging. I don't think they heard it. <laughs> right now we're walking to Five Cents. Five Senses. Five Senses for some Korean food and I am really excited. <gasps> no! I'm gonna be so sad. No, it might be closed. <laughs> And I added kimchi to it, and then I got spicy tofu soup. Mmm, so good. 
Monica, how'd you like it? It was so good. And Kat, how'd you like it? Machida. <laughs> We are leaving the Korean barbecue place. We're running to H&M because Sarah has some uncomfy shoes on and needs to get stuff. And then we are going to the novelty, which should be really, really fun. For some people, it didn't quite pick it up the first time. We could do something new and exciting, and we had this great idea. And we're like, what if we go really sci-fi fantasy on this one and like open it up to that audience? So um, we started sketching some ideas in house, things that were had more people, things that were maybe more classically iconic. This is what we came up with here. Um, and we had an illustrator we were really, really excited to work with. Uh. He's awesome. You may have seen him, some of his work on other jackets. Um, and he came around and we asked him for his ideas and he was like all sorts of things to work with. Um, and we loved them and they're gorgeous, but we sort of had this like aching feeling that it wasn't really quite feeling like playing E. Taylor book. Um, for those of you that are familiar with her books, um, she's got this like really gorgeous literary style that sort of like should sense sort of the mass paperback um, fantasy that we're often associated with these covers with. So we're starting to get a little bit worried. We're like, okay, we're going to push forward. Let's try. Let's keep going. Um, and we're trying to take them in more literary direction. <gasps> and they're gorgeous so and they're beautiful. And again, like maybe not exactly something that feels like the Delaney Taylor brand. So we're like, all right. And another concern that Lane brought up, which is really, really valid, is that um, for those of you who read the book, Laszlo is the main character. Um, and continuing forward into the series, other characters may become more important. And we didn't want to create any market confusion by having um, sort of this female first character and then also locking us down as to like, well, then who becomes the face of the cover of these books moving forward. So we have to rethink this. Um, and we keep going back to this idea of how much we love the UK cover. Also, we love our cover, we love the UK cover so much, and we're thinking if there's something there. Um, so we reach out to our friends in the UK, and they tell us they're actually repackaging their um, paperback. Um, so they're giving us a lot to think about, right? Because we have our sci-fi fantasy direction that we're working on. We have the UK's gorgeous cover that we already love. And then we have what they've given us here. Um, and we looked at this and we're like, oh, that's so UK. <laughs> 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 so it wasn't really working out for us either. Um, so, but we loved Jantine's work and we thought maybe we can change the type and squeeze it up a little bit and uh, give people that maybe want to collect a paperback set of the books also something new and exciting to play with. So we tried some tech design, something that sort of tied it together with our strange uh, The Dreamer Love type-wise. And here's where we ended up. So Aww. I'm actually not sure what the on-sale date is for this, but if you see it in stories, it's on sale now. <laughs> Hi guys, and this is really fun. I'm really to kick off uh, Book Expo, uh, so I'm glad to see you all here. And um, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how Strange the Dreamer came to be, and um, Muse of Nightmares as well. It's a little bit of a a strange journey. So after I finished writing the Daughter Smoke and Bone trilogy, um, I had the cool, you know, uh, chance to decide, you know, what do I want to write next? I've been working on this this story, this story for five years, and it had started as a sort of like a whim, as a writing exercise one day that had grown to take, you know, five years of my life in the best possible way, and it was done, and it was that sort of like wow, I could, look, I could write anything now, what am I going to write? And because I'm not like the world's fastest writer, and I, it took me a really long time to learn how to finish a book that I have basically, oh, like 
26 years of unfinished or unwritten books sort of like waiting in line in my head. And um, so now I was like, well, what am I, I going to do? And I went on a writing retreat. And so I finished Dreams of Gods and Monsters like right before Christmas. And it was this sort of, I'm always super late. <laughs> and uh, you know, if you guys heard the term crashing the schedule, <laughs> and it was so bad, actually, with Dreams of Gods and Monsters that I had like one day with copy edits. Um, and so when I went on this retreat in February, I was like really exhausted. It was finally all done. And um, I was in Mexico with uh, Holly Black and Cassie mm -hmm. Clare and Sarah Reese Brennan and Kelly Wink. And they were all working really hard. And I was just kind of like, Ugh. <laughs> And the only thing I really had to do on that trip was have fun and figure out what I'm going to write next. So I spent the time going through these old ideas and new ones and trying to like put them together into you know what might be a book I would want to write. And I came up with three ideas. One was an adult book, and two of them were YA. And I um, put them together into pitches, which I'd never done before. All my books um, up to that point had been sold as partials with sequels. And so this was new, writing a pitch and making it sound you know, like a real idea for a book rather than just, you know, a bare sort of beginning to a book because that's, uh, I didn't have a whole story. I had a premise, something that was exciting to me. Um, so I had, to, I, so I had these two, two YA ideas and luckily Almina liked them and Little Brown bought them. So that was super exciting. And then I had to figure out which one to write first. their new books to us, which was really cool. We also got some super exciting books that I will show you. Right now, everyone is going to this place called Dig In to eat some dinner before we go to Mean Girls, and I'm really, really excited. Right now, we are at a place called Bibble and Sip, which is like a cafe, and we all got dessert and tea and stuff. I got my classic black tea with milk and sugar and a chocolate cake and a chocolate brownie cookie. Natasha, what did you get? A lavender latte and coffee. Ooh, yeah. that sounds really good. And glorious ginger snap carrot cake. Yeah, sounds so good. Monica, what did you get? I got an Earl Grey cream puff, which is so good. And this was cute. It's still cute. A little Totoro macaron and yeah. a matcha latte. Very nice. Sarah got nothing, but she's eating all of her food she's because grounding. sharing is caring. <laughs> and Sasha, what did you get? I got a matcha puff, a matcha cake, and a matcha drink. I'm sorry, I can't tell. Do you like matcha? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> We're walking to Mean Girls, and I'm so excited. I haven't been to a Broadway show since like elementary school, so I'm like really excited. Ooh, we also went up with Michael. Michael's here now. He had to work all day, so he wasn't with us. Talk about it. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, I had Caucasian, 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 Caucasian. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
What was everyone's favorite song? Mine was Someone Gets Hurt. What I actually like the opening. The no opening one else was knows really the good. The song. Okay, well, which one? The describe opening. It? The very opening. The, the one that Regina Revenge. sings at the Halloween party. Someone Gets Hurt. Michael, what was your favorite song? <laughs> She's vlogging. His favorite part was when they didn't sing. Yeah. <laughs> no. oh, um, Halloween. I love Just Halloween so and Donuts. Karen's song was really great. It was so much fun. Everyone was so talented, and it was like a really good play. And they're play literally 30 feet away. They're right there, but there's so many people yeah, like just asking for signatures. Yeah, but I'm so amazing. happy. For I'm I, this so was, happy. This was my first Broadway show, and I am so happy. <laughs> yeah, it was it was amazing. It was so great. Brian, <laughs> you're in my shot. Brian. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't even montage footage anymore. This is just straight up vlog trash. You could be in the ensemble. <laughs> oh, get it. <laughs> so it's like 1.30 in the morning. Happy Thursday. <laughs> um, so we basically got home from Mean Girls and we ate some Domino's and now it's bedtime. I can't wait to get up in like four hours. <laughs> I have to get up in like three. Hashtag PEA week. <sighs> so yeah, today was super fun. We had an amazing time. Y'all saw it all. We don't really need to do a big recap because Emma needs to go to sleep. But Same. I will see you guys soon for my vlog for tomorrow for Thursday of Book Expo. Bye.